Thanks for tuning in. This is After Bottom. It's coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 251 of the Iron Man 3 Mark 41, otherwise known as as bones. As you can see, really cool image here, very similar to what we got with a lot of the other house party protocol figures where you have the kind of grid here in the back, but then you also had the figure front and center. And a really cool looking figure at that. Uh, but now on the side, you just have that continuation of that grid pattern. The top here says Iron Man 3. Nothing here on the side that's all that different here on the back. We have the various warnings and things like that that are customary on these packages. And then it just slides up like so. And then on the inside, we have the cast and crew responsible for making the figure, as well as uh, that image of Bones in the house party, the Hall of Armor setup. You just slide this little bit right out like so, and here you have the clamshell that fully houses and displays the figure within. As you can see, he doesn't come with a heck of a lot. He's one of the new figures to utilize uh, the effect uh, sort of accessories, and you see you get a bunch of those, you get a couple extra hands, and then the figure. But this guy really is, in terms of gimmick, one of my absolute favorites. So for the packaging, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get this guy out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have Bones open up and out of his packaging. And as you can see, there's this crazy monstrosity that he comes with. This is probably his biggest accessory, but the starting off first, uh, in addition to the two close fists that you see on him, he does come with the standard uh, both right and left hand that have the little angle on here so that you can plug it in there so you can get a repulsor blast. Now, this figure does still have all the light-up features, which I'll show you, uh, except I did not put the batteries in the, the arms. Those are actually kind of a pain in the butt to do, but I'll touch on that here in a little bit. And then he also does come with again the standard articulated hand you got the fingers that bend and everything which is wonderful and much like the uh, repulsor blast hands you do have the uh, clear plastic piece right here which allows the light to kind of shine through so you do have that then as i said this comes with a whole bunch of the new uh, effect elements that they're kind of including with some of their hot toy figures the first one that i saw was with the electro figure but this really kind of goes all out you get a total of eight of these little the flame looking blasts now I, I like i said i i'm not a huge fan of these it really does give it more of a a, a toy sort of feel now people are like well this is a toy it's a hot toy well i i don't really think of this as a toy to me this is more of a, a collectible sort of thing this is not something that i would give to a kid to play with i mean people use the term toy very loosely nowadays i mean i say that my uh, car that i drive around in is a toy but it really isn't so uh, these just I, I mean i i like these don't get me wrong i i just do get more of a toy feel with them i i think that the detail on here is really nice you got some really nice sculpt on there and of course the paint job is pretty good one thing that i do think is a little unfortunate is i think that these are a little bit too big uh, looking at the movie uh, they were not as big as these really kind of make it out to to be basically it's it's not bad it, and it gives a really cool effect as you can see you have four of these smaller ones and then you got two larger ones that have these little holes in here and all these have these little holes that are actually on there that that's how you attach it and then you have two uh, also large ones here that actually have pegs that will go on the bottom of his feet. Uh, now, if you remember in the movie, Bones actually was the first of Tony's suits that could actually split apart. Now, it wasn't autonomous, really, and by that I mean that he couldn't control it with his mind, I guess. But this is essentially uh, the prototype for the Mark 42. And in the movie, you could see that it the split up and could go in various parts, and uh, that's where these little thruster pieces actually come in handy, because you can actually do that with this figure. Uh, now, setting him off to the side for right now, now, I, I want to focus on this crazy monstrosity right here. This is a new style stand that has a couple different parts on here. As you can see down here, uh, getting this out of the way, down here you have just the standard uh, display stand. You also have the flexible pillar that comes up, but it also has this extra bit here, which goes off into a crazy sort of Dr. Octopus kind of look to it. And all of them have little clamps on there. This is all designed so that you can actually take the Bones armor and split it apart and have it displayed in a like broken up kind of flying pose and that's where these little pieces come in handy so you'll plug them in and you'll be able to display it on this and i'll show that off here in a little bit but getting this out of the way for right now and focusing here on the figure like i said this is kind of a precursor to what we got with the mark 42 the reason why he nicknamed this bones is because this is a very skeletal suit as you can see there are no armor plates actually on him this was designed to be very lightweight very 
very uh, flexible and very agile. So by having the plates off, it makes it a very kind of weak armor in terms of defenses, but makes it very quick. Obviously not as quick as the Mark 40, which is the hyper velocity armor. This is just kind of stripped down to its bare bones, so to speak. You can see all the detail underneath there. Great amount of detail on it. it it's ridiculous how much detail is actually in here. I mean, some really great panels in there showing off a lot of the detail. You can see a lot of it when you come around here to the back. And as you can see, he doesn't have those uh, calf pieces that would come over. So basically, that's what you're looking at. All of this is what is underneath the armor of just kind of any of the suits. And you can see like this is his shoulder pieces. You would have like that flat piece that would cover up right on here. So that's what you're basically getting. You're getting a stripped down version of his armor. Now, what's really cool about this is a lot of the pieces on here are attached by magnets that helps you to kind of break them apart. But honestly, a lot of the articulation that you would expect in here is still present, which is really kind of cool. Uh, first for the head, the head is on this magnet. Uh, what's really nice is underneath here, they put a nice little piece of felt so that as you put it on there and you're rotating it around, it doesn't scratch this up or anything like that. So you get a nice full range of motion really with that. And even you can, well, put it like that while well, the magnet kind of makes it rotate around, but you can get it like that, which is really cool. Something that some of the other suits really can't do. Then you come down to the shoulders. The shoulders do ratchet up just like so. They don't really angle in and out. That is one joint that misses, but they do rotate all the way around. So you do still get a nice range of motion there. Rotates here at the upper part of the bicep. This whole section here does flex up, so you can kind of get that out of the way if you need to. So just angling that up like so, you can rotate that right there. And again, great amount of detail throughout this entire uh, figure, including the arm. It's really amazing. Now, this section here does detach, and that's how you actually turn the light on. This is what I was talking about. This is kind of tough to get into because I don't have a screwdriver that is as small as that screw requires. So you'll just unscrew that this whole section here will slide up and then you put the batteries in and then this comes off and then you got the standard light section right there but I'm not going to show you guys that because like I said I can't get a screwdriver small enough in there so that's how that actually is integrated that's how they put that in there instead of making it uh, broken up here in the actual arm I think that's really very cool he does bend here at the elbow one thing that they do recommend and again with this being a new armor you really want to make sure that you go through and actually read and follow the instructions so you know that every Everything that this figure can do is done properly. So he does get basically a 90 degree bend here at two joints here at the elbow. But if you remove this and then bring this out, this actually can slide out. You do have to be careful, but you can slide that out a little bit further. Make sure that you hold the upper part of the arm when you're doing it, and then it can bend a little bit more so you can get a little bit more of a flex there. And that's just, that's a cool look. That's like, Iron Man, look at me, I'm flexing. <laughs> it's really cool. So again, put that back, and then you can leave it out like that. It just creates a little bit of a gap right here, but it collapses right back up just like so. Kind of get these out of the way just so that it's a little bit easier to do this. And then the upper torso stretches out like so. You can see that it exposes some more internal pieces right here and that allows for some flex forward and back, side to side. It rotates fully and you can see again, great amount of detail under there. It's like that's right where the Tony would actually be. I mean, it's really very cool. And this is on a spring, so you do get it flexing very nicely. Again, collapsing that right back down so it separates here in two sections. So you still get that full range of motion. Coming down to the hips, uh, you can see that it's basically kind of locked in this position. It's stuck like this. You actually have to slide this whole section down to get him to angle out like that. When you have it up just like so, you can see there's not much clearance. So you're not getting it really doing anything. You can get it rotating a little like so, but it's not really moving forward and back or anything. That's really kind of, well, I mean, it moves forward and back, but you do have to move it down to actually facilitate that. So again, just slide it down right there. Then you can slide that back. Then you can get a much further range of motion with the actual legs, which is great. They do sort of rotate, but again, it's a little bit more limited because of the way that this is. And this is actually, again, part of the gimmick. So they had to uh, sacrifice some of that articulation, but I still think that it's still wonderfully incorporated with the rest of the figure. And you can kind of angle this up, 
get a spread leg that pose like that so you can still achieve your desired look just takes a little bit of the futzing i suppose which it's a word that i don't like using and then you get two joints here at the knee and then coming down here to the ankle it does move and i'm just going to take his leg off because it's a little bit easier it does have a toe pivot right there and then again you can see the back here really cool how they don't he doesn't even have a heel or anything i mean that's amazing amount of detail i love seeing underneath all that armor this is really absolutely terrific uh, then this whole lower section here you can see it kind of flexes this slides down and then you get a more uh, detailed range of motion you can move it forward and back it pivots side to side uh, but you have to extend it down when you bring it back up kind of locks it into place right here and then you have to make sure that you get that lined up properly so once you have it like that it kind of keeps it in a lock position you have to extend it all the way down in order to get that uh, slight range of motion then again the toe moves up and down so all the articulation is essentially still there. They incorporated it very, very nicely, and I'm absolutely amazed at how great this figure is still articulated. I mean, I definitely didn't expect that amount of range of motion in a figure that was going to be coming apart like that. And you do have to, like I said, fiddle with things, and it's almost easier to keep the ankles spread out because you can get them actually to position a little bit better and get them to stand nicer. Now, as I talked about, he does still have the light-up features. Uh, the arms still have them, the chest has it, and so does the eyes. So you just take this off and then get him to stand there, come around here to this back section, and again, you got some exposed detail under here. I mean, it's really it's so amazing. This section here just will tab up just like so, and then you got the light right there. You can turn that on, and now you have uh, the very classic looking the light up eyes form. So that's still a feature that is incorporated. Very nice. Put that right back on there. Come right here to the back. This whole back section detaches just like so, and then you got the on and off switch right here that when you switch that on, Boom, you got that very bright the LED arc reactor. Again, really wonderful detail, very bright, and I, I really like how this actually comes out very easily so that you're not feeling like it's a chore to get to the actual the switches to turn the lights on. That's one thing that I really don't like on some of the Iron Man figures. It, it feels like a chore to do, and much like these actual arms are a chore, the rest of them actually are, are pretty easy. But now bringing in Dr. Octopus again, this is what we're going to really kind to focus on this is the cool aspect i, I absolutely love this uh, now first off the head like i said is on a magnet so you can detach that but this whole section right here just lifts up just like so now you do get a couple stickers that this is a sticker and this is a sticker uh, i did put those on just because it kind of makes it look a, a little bit better i usually don't like putting the stickers on but then also down here on the inside of his uh, thigh is a sticker piece uh, i just think that it looks a little bit nicer it isn't something that i normally would use but i just think it enhances this figure a little bit more so now with this you come around here you got this extra little piece as well and then you take this and this tabs underneath just like so, get that lined up. And then you got these little ball sections here. Uh, and then you just take these little uh, smaller, you, you can see that they actually have different sizes. This is a little bit more rounded. This is a little bit flat. So this is the rounded section that is used for this. And then you just peg that in there. I right, grab this, do that there, just peg that in. And now you have, uh, and then you can position these how you want. And you have the I'm flying around, okay, whatever. And then up here, I think I'm really high up here, but you got this little piece right here that has, uh, that attaches right to this bottom section. You got a little whole section here and then this just uh, pegs right in there. So you just bring that in, lock that in. Oh, well, if I get it lined up and boom, there you have that. And now you can have his, his head flying around, which is just unbelievably awesome. I love it. And then this, uh, the arms here, they detach at the shoulder so again all of these have magnets in here so it helps to hold them in there but you have this section right here and then you got the little peg and so you just bring this in be very careful with these pieces here because they are a little bit fragile but you just wedge that in there like so kind of angle this however you want uh, position it in any um, variety of ways and just knock that off and then you just bring this over here and you'll just attach that with these little C-clamp sort of things right there. So now you have that, do that on this side as well. Pull that off, kind of just wedge that in there just like so. Angle this however you really want and then bring that in 
just like so. And then again, you got a little C-clamp here, which can hold it pretty well. It's a little bit easier to not do it just at the elbow joint. So there you can see what's basically happened. I mean, it's really very neat. And then you just take this section, take the legs off, just like so. You have the torso right here. You can do whatever you really want with this, uh, but I like extending these out a little bit. And then you've got these larger ones that just peg in right here. Do that on this side as well. And then you got the standard kind of clamp right here that locks right there like so. Kind of, oh, I'll detach that, why don't I, Paul? Open this back up. There we go. Something like that. Yeah. Oh, actually, that's probably good right there. And then again, all of these are bendy, so you can actually flex that around however you really want. I'm gonna bend this off to the side a little. And then again, with the legs, you got both the right and left leg. And then on the bottom here is uh, the thruster, so you just put that right underneath there, kind of angle this, then bring this around here, open this clamp, clamp that right there. Do that on this leg as well. Make it a little bit more dynamic looking. I'm not very good at creating dynamic poses or anything, but that's it. And now you can see that you basically have his entire body just split apart and just looking really cool. Now, again, you do have to adjust a little bit. So I'm gonna bring this down. That's gonna adjust the height a little. That really is really cool. I, I, I mean, it's something that um, I, I, I didn't honestly anticipate liking all that much. I, I thought it was a cool kind of idea, but honestly, it, it wasn't something that really just stood out in my mind as being one of the cool kind of gimmicks, I guess. I, I mean, this is really awesome. Now, to be totally honest though, the problem that I have with this is probably going to be the price. This guy is almost $300, it's like 280 bucks. And yeah, you do get like these extra effects and everything and there's a lot more kind of detail put in this and obviously the fact that it can split up is, is really cool, but I'd probably be a little bit happier at the 240, maybe 250 price range. 280 just seems a little bit too much. Now that being said, I still absolutely recommend this. This is a figure that I think Iron Man collectors are really going to love having in their collection. I just do wish that it was priced a little bit lower but that does not take away from how great i think the figure really has come out all the detail the articulation uh, the whole gimmick that it has really is absolutely terrific and one of hot toys best pieces and i think they deserve a lot of credit for being uh, very creative with how they actually did this so if this is a figure that you're interested in like i said i think it's going to be more towards those hardcore iron man collectors but even if you're a casual one this is a cool piece so if you are interested in picking this guy up he is available at sideshow collectibles so all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description you'll go to sideshow where you can pick this guy up and you can add them to your collection today. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optivotomous, and until next time, I'll talk.